Hello and welcome to the Mission TV show. We're so glad you can join us today. You know, in the Word, there are so many verses that mean something special to each of us. And in Revelation chapter 14, there are verses talking about angels with different messages. And one of them is very special to my heart and to the hearts of our guests as well. It's Revelation 14 and verse 6. And it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. We have Daniel and Tesha Bear with us today. And they are Jesus for Asia missionaries in Thailand at our studio. Welcome to the show, Daniel and Tesha. It's so good to have you here with us today. Thank you. And um, just wanted to start out asking you how you got into missions. I know that it kind of happened for you before you were married. Mm -hmm. So kind of give us a brief history. I had um, been working at a small self-supporting school and um, had, was a new Adventist. And uh, they had a mission trip to Mexico. And on my first trip, <laughs> I fell in love with just missions. And I, I thought then I could do this for the rest of my life. And um, for Tesha? Well, for me, it was just more of um, reading mission stories. We used to, as a family, for family worship, um, read all these different mission stories. And I, I just thought, wow, if those are ordinary people, then God could do something with, in my life with that way, too. OK, so what is your, what is your college experience? What do you? As, we're as as we're both graduates, bachelor's degrees um, at Southern Adventist University, and I have a Bachelor of Arts in Religious Studies and a minor in Education. And, and I have a Bachelor's in Nursing, and um, before that I also got a, my Associates in Nursing, and before that uh, Personal Ministries Associates. So kind of headed toward the ministry direction yeah. feeling with your degrees, the not call. so much with yours. Feeling the call toward um, missions, even that was why I chose the direction I chose. Not that I felt the call to be a pastor, not that I felt the call to be a teacher, but that I wanted training and skills that would be useful um, for, for someday in the mission field. Uh, so that was someday what I felt God was leading to, um, desiring but then looking at the debt and rising and rising and rising for college tuition and wondering how that would ever be possible. <laughs> okay, so then you met each other and we, you said it was kind of under special circumstances. It so was. I, share that with us. Um, I, I needed one credit hour because of taking an Adventist College's abroad program left me with Mm. a void of 0.7, so I need a one credit hour filler and I'm looking through the summer classes and I see a class in massage and hydrotherapy and thought, well that could be useful in the mission field too, mm -hmm. uh, some skill here. And, um, and I took it because I needed an elective for, um, actually three electives for the Southern Nursing Program and that was one of the ones I wanted and it was the last minute, I didn't even know if I would be able to get on on the in the class because it was like a day late when I, when I signed up. <laughs> and I'm the only non-nursing student in the class <laughs> at this summer session and the professor knows virtually all the other students and so she starts talking to me and asking me why am I taking this class and and what are my goals and virtually any time that I mention to people that my major was religious studies which was not a normal major they would say what are you going to do with that and I said well I hope to go into the mission field someday and unbeknownst to me um, the professor caught Tessa's head whipping around like a radar <laughs> as Tessa describes it. Someone that's single that wants to go into missions? Oh, maybe I should get to know this guy. And then our, uh, it seemed that we were working together a lot in our class, and I'm thinking, uh, which actually we find out later our professor was trying Setting to Setting you up. Uh, <laughs> trying to politely, and if, nice. she said if there was anything there that it could be fostered. And, but um, the class was only a week long, and well, uh, the particular thing there that, that we would focus on missions, but we were also 
desiring God's will in our life, and mm -hmm. so we were praying for His uh, direction. And um, as the class ends and God opens doors for us uh, to 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 further interact, and um, we have a model in our minds of Christian courtship and seeking God's will throughout the whole stages of it, and. It was, it became a testimony when uh, we were engaged and we went to Dominican Republic. Mm. And um, there we are, we're both individual preaching. She's at one church, I'm at another church, but. With the Share Him program. With the mm -hmm. Share Him program uh, through the college. Um, and it, it, your church uh, elder gets up in front of the church, you can tell. And yet he had heard our story, and um, partic particularly that we had chosen not to hold hands um, until later in the engagement, or and definitely we're not, not going to be kissing until the wedding, and we weren't going to go to the beach together on our mission trip. And um, he explained that in Spanish, and you could hear an audible gasp. <gasps> They're not going to the beach. <laughs> They're not going to kiss. <laughs> but it was a testimony that, that they had no concept of, um, what do you describe? Um, waiting. Waiting or courtship that, mm -hmm. and standards. And, but for us, it was just, uh, this was what we wanted to do to honor God mm -hmm. and uh, our commitment with Him. But also, we were there at that uh, project because we wanted to see God was he calling us to the mission field? We wanted to try out together mm -hmm. and experience mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So that was well, our first happy. experience uh, together and, and the both of us. And I don't know if you'd had a mission experience prior to that or not. Not very much. Um, I did do a lot of LE work, but um, for foreign missions, I hadn't had any experience before. Okay. okay. So then moving on through time a little bit, you ended up working for a ministry that has Lots of missionaries yes. out in the field, but you were here in America. <laughs> we were here in America, and um, this very location <laughs> near had just been acquired or was in the process of being acquired by GMI. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gospel Ministries International. Gospel Ministries yeah. International, and, um, and they were looking at uh, developing this into a TV studio, and they were uh, broadening their needs, and I had IT skill and was... Um, had been working contract jobs up to that point, but really wanted to be involved in missions and uh, felt that God was calling to this. And Tesha was working as an RN, and we looked at the situ financial situation and decided we could live off of her budget. Okay. And so I became a full-time volunteer. And um, okay. during that time, we met you and John. You were invited here to tour the location, and uh, we heard about uh, JFA and Faith Camp. and. Finally went to, let's see, we went to Faith Camp 08. Yeah. yeah, we did get to that. And Faith Camp 09, a year later. And <laughs> <laughs> Faith Camp 010 was when I felt God was strongly directing us specifically to the uh, All Asia Studio in Thailand. I felt, I felt it's, we need to go, we need to do something. And so it was urgency for you, a sense I of urgency. I felt that, a sense of urgency. And I felt that, that, that Thailand was the location, and then I was praying, okay, so I was looking at all the projects in Thailand and thinking and praying over each one, and then I felt when um, the Osbournes presented the All Asia Studio project, I was like, I knew right here. That was it. This is where, where kind of backing up a little, it was, it was a little bit uncertain in years prior because we had come to you saying we feel called and a burden for Asia, but we didn't have that very specific understanding of where, yeah, where God was leading us to. Us and we did, yeah, and we were, we were looking <laughs> forward to that, and then uh, we got redirected by God's uh, plans. Mm -hmm. He sent us down to Texas. I think he was acclimating us and uh, <laughs> still working warm. on our characters <laughs> in other ways. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, but for you, Tasha, it wasn't quite so clear. No. no. We were in, in uh, living in Texas at the time, and I think mostly because I just had Nathaniel, um, our second child, 
and I was nursing him. God knew I wasn't quite, quite recovered yet, and so if he had given me the call that he did um, a year later, at that point, then I would have been overwhelmed and said, I can't do that. There's no way. With a brand new baby. <laughs> with a brand new baby. Yeah. <laughs> but God knew the timing ahead of time. But it was a, it was a test, and it was a trial, and um, it, I, I cried about it a lot because I was like, I didn't, I didn't feel the call. Why? What's wrong? You know, there's something wrong with me. Uh, and, and, and God used it to work on things in my character that, um, that um, needed to be refined. And, okay. But it was tough because I was like, I always, it's not the way I imagined it to happen. But then a year later, um, Nathaniel was almost one year old, I think. And um, we got an email. We had already bought our tickets to go to Thailand. And then after that <laughs> was when I got an email from Vinnie Osborne. And she had been talking with Pastor Pamor, the director of our project in Thailand. And he had said that they were needing a girls' team and listed off qualifications. You have to love young people, um, um, be, have teaching skills, or be willing to teach. Um, if you can teach piano, guitar, or violin, or all of the above, that would be nice. Um, being willing to, to um, you know, pinch hit when needed, and things like that. And so it was kind I was of like, reading off your... And reading off. Reading off things that has, she plays. God has been preparing yeah. me for. I'm, I'm a nurse, so I can... I can be a school nurse, I, I'm a mom now, so I know what my mom is like, and I can mother my own children as well as mothering the, these other young people. And then okay. she plays guitar and violin, and so, yes. <laughs> yeah, so she has it's additional. Like, wow, all of the. Yeah, no, but. <laughs> that's okay. Guitar and violin are a pretty good start, mm -hmm. actually. That's a lot more than some places have. Well, yeah. I, I know you have some pictures. Why don't you start sharing yes. with us? I know you have a few stories inter interspersed with the pictures. We so can start with let's keep um, going. what we've been presenting there. We, um, after uh, a year later than what John had asked, if, he would, if we would give him a picture of us with the studio, <laughs> we man finally managed to get a picture of um, our family in Thai outfits at the studio. Okay, that's and, nice. Um, and there was, uh, that's actually an earlier picture of the studio before the, the grounds, right. uh, flowers were planted. Landscaping, yeah. Landscaping. Then our kids, um, and this is the conference room, and they love to come over. Mommy, can we go, go see Daddy at the studio? Which is across the lawn. Uh -huh. <laughs> Since and where we're staying, it's, it's so far. close. So they now, walk over. why don't over. you tell us their names? Natanya is our daughter. And our little boy Nathaniel, and okay. she's not quite three in that picture, and he's he's um, one, and one and a half. Yeah, thereabouts. They're They've one. grown quite a bit since yes. then. A year older now, almost a year. They've not quite at least a half a year. A half a year is from ago. this picture. They've so, okay. doubled in age since I felt the call to go <laughs> <laughs> to the project here. Okay. And, uh, well, it's good that you can work so close to home and yeah it's yeah. an advantage um because of my because now tessa has a position with deaning there it's an advantage that we can shuffle our time back and forth here mm -hmm. that i can uh, take when i need to watch the kids for her to do something like uh, violin class i can watch the kids okay and, so what um, is this that you're this showing one here? we're showing the comparison between when we arrived we had just the foam padding carpet padding on the walls and that's the not very attractive yeah. multicolored, um a bit distracting and uh and then later um uh, we managed to uh, get the wall surfaces covered and uh, do a little bit more work on the video editing table. Oh yes, and there was a miracle involved that, that was just exciting there as we were taking all of these little wood frame pieces that, uh, that had been uh, cut at least, I think it, this was the last thing that uh, Rick, Hernandez, Rick, Rick Hernandez, Hernandez did, he left yeah. behind all this. So he had all these pieces cut and some assembled. And of course now we're having to put them all into place and recut things and uh, at one point we tallied up all the wall surface remaining and tallied up all the pieces of wood and we were, all of us could tell that there was not there was sufficient there was not oh, sufficient yes. not sufficient but we prayed that morning as, and we just kept continuing to work on putting it together and uh, 
we got done with leftover pieces. Well, praise the And we were splicing some even that were bent and warped. <laughs> so I mean, that's using up more. So that was, it just felt <laughs> like the widow and the, the oil well, yeah, <laughs> continued. Yeah, I was going to say you can multiply wood and not just barley <laughs> loaves and fishes. Well, <laughs> afterward, yes. Afterward, I said it was, you know, you realize it, it was barley loaves, fishes, and baskets. Yeah, there you go. Because they didn't start out with that many baskets either. <laughs> so he multiplied wood, too. <laughs> and Christ did. So that's the control room at the studio? That was then. the control okay. room, yes. Um, this was actually before that, when we had the control table sitting out in the studio, before we had um, even managed to bring the cables back into there. And this was one of the first video shoots that I was sitting down at. And I'm the one sitting at the switcher there. If it's visible or not, I don't know for the audience, okay. but we had a Thai pastor um, preaching uh, creation to Revela revelation there is the chart behind him and wow. he's preaching some sermon related to somewhere on the timeline. Okay. Um, this was exciting getting the kitchen set um, uh, it, that those it's walls beautiful. were covered in foam and there was nothing there but just the foam covered walls and um, uh, we in, we peeled off the foam where the kitchen set was going in, um, put tile up, painted it um, uh, individual there who's really been contributing a lot, Ian, uh, has been jumping in and building sets for us. Um, and he, he built a frame flooring underneath it, and then we put all this together. And so that's nice. We've Beautiful. got this wonderful, fully functional kitchen set. Yes, they fed us from there when we were yes. there with you guys. That was neat. And so here is actually the kitchen set in use. It was exciting. We, we got, um, See, eight to ten cooking programs recorded okay. here with uh, a Thai lady um, teaching basic vegan vegetarian cooking recipes. And it was just awesome to be able to have this yes. <laughs> in use and in production. It's exciting because we're just at the early stages there at the studio with uh, getting production rolling there. Yeah. Um, Tess has been uh, invited. This is the girls' dormitory there. And our apartment is just to the left here uh, so we're and then this is just across the lawn <laughs> from, the from the studio, studio. <laughs> yeah so she's been working um yeah i've been working as girls dean i was basically being a mommy to uh, all the young people this isn't the main um it's not a school per se it's a dorm the um the desire was for to be able to make a place for these young people to have a safe place where they'd be able to go to school and receive extra training in um, in the Bible and try to raise up workers for the Lord um, that's the general idea uh, Pastor Pomore knew these young people from in the mountains he mm -hmm. travels around up in the Karen villages. Kur the Karen are a, a hill tribe. We're actually wearing, We're wearing our... some Karen outfits. And um, they, they have lived in, I mean, they're from Burma, but there are many Karen villages. And these young people that go to, to uh, that are living at our dorm, they have grown up on the Thailand side. Mm -hmm. So they, they never knew Burma or Myanmar. Um, and, but Pastor Moore heard about the need for these students to be able to have a place to go to school. Mm -hmm. they, their own villages don't have um, the grades to go all the way up to the at least even the ninth grade, which is where Thailand um, students can stop if they want to. Um, okay. But. They, so they would have to go to the cities, and that's dangerous. And so they needed a, a place where they could go to school. Have One young education. girl lost her life because her employer, because she asked to find a job. And uh, Pastor Vermore heard that, that she had been killed by the individual who had been her employer because he was trying to pressure her to become a prostitute. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, that's not a standard acceptable. And when she said no, her, she lost her life over it. And that was such a such painful a thing for him that he, f he felt a need to provide a safe environment for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at first, he brings them with sponsors to just the Chiang Mai Adventist Academy that is where they attend. Mm -hmm. And then he realizes that the, 
the, um, the student body being such a large population and less than 50% of them are Christian. Are Christian. Mm -hmm. And so that that isn't even safe there, and right. so he brings them into his home and then eventually builds this dormitory that it's um, yeah. So how many girls do you have in the dorm? This year we had 16 girls, and um, next year we'll probably have six more. Okay. Um, and we also have some boys in the program now. Um, the, I think this year was one of the first years that they had boys in the program. And there were s seven boys. Actually, there were three more um, off-campus girls as well they were, that are staying with Pastor Bramore and his wife as well. Um, so there was a total of 19 girls this time. Okay. And, um, but the 16 that are in the actual dorm on, on this campus are the ones that, that I was most involved with. Close. Okay, so, so this is all of the students, including the minus boys. I think there was a few one didn't make it to this one picture. Or two boys okay. of the boys and girls. Um, so. One of them in the picture has graduated, and but mm -hmm. she's going to remain uh, working in the office this next year, is what okay. we've heard. Good. Okay. So um, then. And here's a picture of me starting to teach violin. Ben Sharon is also in the picture on the top, um, which was a, a real blessing because um, he. Could, can speak Karen, and so he could translate, okay, this is how you hold the violin, um, don't use it as a drumstick, yeah. it will hurt the violin bow, yep. and um, be careful with the rosin, don't let it break, please, yeah. <laughs> it's expensive, <laughs> little things like that, um, but also, and then the, the music theory, which is much more difficult to translate than I thought it would be. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't find any of the Thai terms for um, for music. Um, in our I little had to dictionaries. Ask my dictionary. <laughs> I had the to ask my Thai teacher <laughs> later, um, but um, fortunately Ben was able to jumpstart it with and teaching them in Korean <laughs> what I was trying to teach them. So we got them started um, how to hold the bow and and um, got to Twinkle Twinkle Star by the time that he was. Um, had to leave for another part and of this project. And since learned three hymns now? Yeah, we worked on Amazing Grace, um, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Um, what's another one I like to do? Um, mm. Safely Through Another Week was a little harder. And Bright in the Corner Where You Are is um, one that, that they were just... Some second. of those girls really like the challenge. Yeah. yeah. They, they just... So, but some of those are a little more, yeah, a little cool. faster. More advanced. Um, yeah. I was going to also say, um, okay. since I didn't have very much violin lessons before. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when, when, I mean, okay, let's see. When's the last time I had violin um, lessons? was when I was like... You're half know, as old as you are now. <laughs> so <laughs> there had been an, an extreme long break between, like, yeah. Um, yeah, between me really practicing violin. And so I went, when I came, I said, well, Pastor Moore, I, I really can't play violin very well. At the best, it, it would be just fiddle. And he's like, well, that's more than they know, though. So you can teach them what you know. And But I've been praying, because I really want them to be able to play well. And, yeah. and and so I asked God to help me. And he's been teaching me. And my my skill level, I think, is a little bit it's noticeably higher now. <laughs> it's it's mm, nothing like having to teach something. I know. So right? To have to learn it better, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> So they mostly Very learn true. by imitation now, um, so that's why it's, it feels like pressure to me. Like, oh no, I can't do it right myself. How can I teach them how to do it? And, um, but yeah, God um, helps. God helps. He does. And he fills in where if you we give don't your have skills it. or your talent, mm -hmm. even if it's a, you know. Small. Lacking, yeah. yeah. It seems like it's so lacking. I and never could do a vibrato, but I'm just starting to learn how to do that. It's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, the Lord fills in. Um, it's not that He calls the qualified sometimes, but that He actually yeah. provides and qualifies those that will answer the call. So it's mm -hmm. real. We've we've experienced that for yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. It's really exciting. <clears throat> okay, well let's yeah let's continue. continue. Yeah. Almost uh, the, I selected this picture because a lot of what I do or have been able to do has been mothering. Um, mm. I've led out in worship um, in the mornings um, on a rotation with the other staff, uh, which is kind of interesting because I can't speak the language and they can't understand enough English for them to be able to understand a simple devotional. Uh -huh. and, but they do thankfully have um, um, 
uh, the desire, of ages desire of ages translated into Thai. Yes, and so I take my uh, English desire of ages and their Thai desire of ages, and I count paragraphs and double check by okay, that's in parentheses. That's the refer Bible reference, and <laughs> so I can match it up um, and. It, it, sometimes it feels like though that I just I can't do enough because I would like to be able to share like when we're doing John the Baptist real devotional thoughts yeah this is inputs. my experience with baptism and this is how how I was converted and but I can't say that yet and we're learning but you're learning it's slow yeah. but we are learning yeah. yes the, but it's a slower slower yeah. process for me and Tasha <laughs> is picking up uh, ladies pick up language more fast is it what I've been told like by almost <laughs> everyone quickly, yeah. but she also children, has had the musical like lightning oh yes so our children are becoming trilingual because of Quran and Thai being spoken mm -hmm. there and what the the joy is is that these students from the dorm are they're welcome in our home and so they come over and they play with our kids that they can even help us in watching them in sh short periods of time and things like that. And they come over for band-aids. Come over for band-aids and and and, uh, and sometimes it's cute. Our Nathaniel has learned to like spicy food because the girls came over and wanted to give him a taste and he takes a bite and Whoa. and then he goes more and they're like what and they kept feeding him more and he kept feeding. Oh boy. <laughs> He's getting a Just taste for spicy baby. food. Yeah, <laughs> spice baby. But it, it's really been Little a joy. Like that have bonded us with the students. It really has. They've felt, the so. they've felt um, they've felt that we love and care for them and we've had feedback now from the other local staff that are Thai Karen that are working with us there. Um, that, that we've been the first ones to open up and allow the students into our home, into our lives, become a part of what they're doing. And uh, I mean, we, we didn't know that we were the first. We just thought that that was the norm. How the norm. <laughs> this is how it should be. And so, yeah. but the, for the kids, uh, they've, they've really been longing for such. And now they have, um, mm -hmm. now they have someone there that they feel. Uh, is loving them and providing the surrogate mother and father that they they miss that's far away. We had one little girl come over one evening homesick yeah. after a break and tears and tears and um, she just needed a hug. Just needed a hug from Definitely. mommy and hugs from our kids. Some and things transcend language barriers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. But even even on the um, growth and grace, you know, young people are. Uh, some of them are in the transition of where hormones are starting to get get them tug at their hearts and and um, they uh, um, there was one time when one of the girls was stepping up to wash dishes next to the boys and she happened to be singing a love secular song. love song at the same time. <laughs> and so it was, yeah, it was like a, oops, it didn't, everybody laughs and, you know, I'm, it, I'm able to say very little in Thai to be able to say it, but, you know, just be able to be a mommy figure there and they're looking at me just to, you know, just for that, oops, sorry, mommy, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, because well. they were starting to realize you know, it's just, I mean, I can't, I can't teach them why yet, but I will be we able to. We long to, and we know that. Yeah. They see the example. example. The example transcends the language. And the other thing so, that has yeah. been, um, has been uh, a bit of a challenge, there are always those questions of, uh, are you really committed? Are you going to stay? Mm -hmm. And we've, we've uh, constantly repeating them, yes, we're here for the long term. Mm -hmm. We're here for the long term. We're committed here. We feel God's call to hear that this is what, his plan for us, for our family, it fits with our family, and so um, yes, as we were. Well, I know, I know, you have a lot more stories I know. to share. I <laughs> know, time. <laughs> yeah, we're running out of time, but um, I just wanted to ask you on that on that note. Mm -hmm. You know, is there is there need for more workers? Is there need? For, oh yes. Um, you know, other people to do similar type of ministry mm -hmm. to what you're doing. It is, even though it was conveyed to us that um, uh, because they've there've been experiences of uh, foreign missionaries coming over, but not necessarily remaining on the project that they committed to but the reality is over there that the, the, the church in Thailand is so small and, and they really don't have a vision or even the means 
uh, with manpower to be able to the means, to bring yeah. this to their people. Um, I mean, as I'm working at the studio, the desire is that we could train up the locals. And mm -hmm. well, just about everywhere I go, the desire is I could work myself out of a job and missions, you know, mm -hmm. that others can replace me. But uh, and there, there is still such a big need for those who, who understand the three angels' message and understand the gospel and the truth um, that can come over there and bring this to them because even the church in Thailand is still so, so small and needs so much. And then they don't even have the resources and finances. There's no way that they can do the work with, with the money they have, you know, with, amongst all the church members that are there in Thailand. So it's people and financial resources that are just huge needs, huge needs over here. And you know, this is the 1040 window where you know, 90 some percent are unevangelized and unreached, and mm -hmm. uh, 99 some percent of Thailand is uh, Buddhist or not Christian in, at all. And so there's such a small mm -hmm. percentage of Christian influence over there, yeah. and they need a right influence because. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> a wrong, a wrong goes so far in in, right. in creating a, a bad image. Uh, and right. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for being here and sharing thank your you. love for the people of Thailand, these beautiful children, and the mm -hmm. the burden in the studio. Such an amazing thing, a testimony to what God can do from nothing. It is. <laughs> it is. It's awesome. <laughs> I always see that place, and it's like somebody raised up a memorial. You mm -hmm. know? God is good. Yeah. It's I God's wanna, studio. Yes, it is God's studio. I want to thank you for joining us today, and I want to challenge you to seek your place in God's work. He will give you the joy. He will give you the love, and he will grow your talents. He will grow your skills, whatever you have. Put it in front of the Lord. Put it on the altar. He will use it for his name's honor and glory. And then the end can come. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the Mission TV show. May God bless you until we see you again.